The car of your dreams was built not from the luxury of a rich lad's home, but from an idea of a poor boy. Rolls-Royce makes some of the most luxurious cars in the world. When it comes to legendary cars, none are more special than Rolls-Royce, remarkably noted for its magnificent style and fascinating quality. Known for producing handcrafted automobiles that promises seamless, magical carpet ride for its customer, a Rolls-Royce car is very popular amongst Hollywood elites and collectors. But how did it come about? What is its namesake? So in today's video, we're going to discuss how Rolls met Royce. It all started with a kid from a poor family who was passionate about innovations. When the farm boy Henry Rice first started tinkering with engines, nobody could have guessed that one day, this boy would create the most expensive car in the world. His flame was lit by a companion who worked along with him, and when that happened, history was made. Frederick Henry Royce was the youngest of five children. He was born in 1863 in England. His parents, James and Mary, managed a flour mill but Henry was hardly interested in that business. As a result, the revenue was small and the family was struggling with poverty. They went bankrupt in 1867. The poor Royce family moved to London in search of a new way to earn their living. Henry was only four years old at the time and his occupation was a bird scarer at the time on a nearby farm. Unfortunately, tragedy struck once again when his father died in 1872. As a result, he had to do a decent job to make life better. He started selling newspapers and delivering telegrams. Henry's childhood poverty had a profound impact on him. He started improving his working condition as a teenager by joking as an apprentice with the Great Northern Railways. Henry lacked proper education and training, but he would never step back in grabbing an opportunity to further his education. In his spare time, Henry would study algebra, French, and electrical engineering. He was also financially assisted by his aunt. A few years later, Henry started doing an internship, and right after that, he started working for a tool-making company. After that, he also tried his hands in working for an electrical company. After three years, he was again facing financial difficulties, and as a result, he was forced to depart. In 1882, he shifted from London to Liverpool. From that time, his aim in life was to become a full-time engineer, so he continued to work for Electric Light and Power Company there. At the age of 22, Henry started implementing his business strategy by building his own company, F.H. Royce & Company. Now, you all have noticed that at the beginning of the video, we've mentioned his engineering buddy Henry who helped him with his dream. His name is Ernst Claremont. Both the friends started working together for several years non-stop. Their hard work led them to discover various electrical components that we use in our day-to-day -day life, doorbells and dynamos. Henry Royce began to lead him elsewhere, to motor cars, even though the company remained growing. By 1894, they were already producing electric cranes as well. Henry Royce plays a crucial role in the innovation of Rolls Royce. The name of the company implies that Charles Stuart Rolls is a second figure who shouldn't be overlooked. Now you might wonder who Charles Stuart Rolls is. Well, he's the youngest child of Lord and Lady Lang's attack. He was born in the year of 1877 in wealthy Brooklyn Square in London. He pursued his love for engineering from a very young age. He was later enrolled in Trinity College in Cambridge. There he studied mechanical engineering. He was nicknamed Dirty Rolls by his fellow undergraduates because of his outstanding personality for tinkering with motors. Did you know that he was the first undergraduate to possess a car during his studies? At the age of 18, he drove a car to Paris and bought his first car, a Peugeot Phaeton, which was quite a rare thing because most people at the time had never really heard of that name. Charles graduated in the year 1898, and by that time, he started working on a steam yacht before going on the London and Northeastern Railway. Since he was more interested in salesmanship and innovation and his father's wealth, Charles opened a new company for car shops. Charles committed the following few years to import and market Peugeot. The business was very successful, and he gained a lot of money. With that money, he started to pay for his sporting endeavors. Besides being an enthusiastic racer, he was also an eager pilot and a pioneer driver. Charles' lifelong fascination for vehicles would eventually cost him more than what he possessed. He bought a used two-cylindrical car in 1901, and he tried to upgrade it. He wanted more, and on that, he started to design his vehicle. He had a natural passion for perfection. After noticing many faults in the car structure, he made a commitment to improving it. And by the end of 1903, he designed and built his first petrol engine. Almost two decades have passed since Henry founded the company. By the next year, he drove his Rolls-Royce 10-horsepower vehicle into the town. 
From the day he started seeing his success, he never stopped. He started building two more vehicles. After that, he donated one of the three cars he made to one of his business partners, Ernest Claremont and he also sold the others to one of his stockholders, Henry Edmonds. Henry Edmonds is a friend of Rolls and the stakeholder of Royce's company. Now you might wonder who this man is and why he played a crucial role here in this story. Well, he was also responsible for arranging the encounter between the two men. Rolls was dissatisfied at the time that his company could only sell imports, so Edmonds set up a meeting. Little did Edmonds know that the meeting would have affected the future of motoring forever. Rolls has always loved three or four cylindrical automation, but after he witnessed Rolls-Royce's two-cylinder car, he was immediately convinced that he had found what he was always looking for. For testing, he drove the two cylindrical automobiles and immediately agreed to sell as many as he could produce. In this way, two men came together and formed a unique team. It's quite strange that the two men are quite different from the perspective of their education, age, and social classes. They came to an argument and built something incredible. Rolls was only 26 years old, whereas Royce was 41. Young Rolls attended the exclusive Trinity College, while Royce's ability was mostly self-taught. Rolls had spent his early adulthood racing around in his expensive car, and Royce had been struggling to make ends meet. The huge success with automobiles led to the establishment of the Rolls-Royce Corporation in 1906. Even though Henry Royce and Charles Rolls were two very different individuals, they also made a fantastic partnership. At last, the six-cylindrical Silver Ghost was introduced. It was regarded as the best car in the world within a year. Impressive, isn't it? But they also thanked Charles's partner for the success because building a brand requires vision. Charles's partner Johnson took the role of the managing director, while his partners Henry and Charles were busy making and selling automobiles as he was aware that it was equally important to improve the company's reputation in the media. But we all know how genius he was, so he did something. He planned several stunts to highlight the silence and dependability of the automobile. In one of his advertisements, the six-cylinder Rolls-Royce was marketed as the best car in the world. But not just one of the best. With that advertisement, Rolls-Royce officially entered the phase that would become synonymous with the brand. It was quite effective in showcasing the outstanding performance of Rolls-Royce, and the man who played an important role in the company was Claude. He was officially nicknamed the hyphen in Rolls-Royce. Of course, marketing by itself can only go so far, but both Henry and Charles committed themselves to produce the highest quality work possible. But it should also be known that Henry in particular was known for pushing himself to a maximum at work. As a result, he couldn't maintain his balanced diet. Sadly, this gave a negative impact on his health, and surprisingly, he managed to outlive his business partner Charles by a few decades, while the latter's passion for aviation continued to grow with time. Henry refused to pursue his passion for aviation despite his best effort to convince him to construct an aero engine. Charles purchased an aircraft and used it for more than 200 flights, and in 1910, he made history by becoming the first person to complete a non-stop double flight across the English Channel. But everything changed when Charles was killed in an airplane crash when he was just 32 years old during a flying exhibition. He was also the first person to perish in an airplane accident, and his death led to the dissolution of the partnership of Rolls-Royce. Henry was the only one left alone to carry the legacy of the company. Henry stuck to his fundamentals of creating the best design with the finest material along with the highest level of craftsmanship in the designing of his cars. He had a natural work ethic, and his innovative design made him establish Rolls-Royce's reputation for superior engineering and quality. However, in 1993, he passed away from digestive tract issues. Despite his poor health, his dedication to Rolls-Royce made it what it is today. And now, we've come to the end of the video. Let us know your views in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.